Welcome to UGC EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Jayadeep Shodongi, Department of English, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta. In this module, we are going to learn Christian poetry and prose. The module is prepared by Professor Devomitra Kaur, Women's College, Kolkata. We have already noticed the growth and development of English literary tradition during the Anglo Saxon period. In this module, we are going to learn the effects of Christianity on Anglo Saxon literature, the Anglo Latin phrase, the period dealing with Anglo Latin literature, the contribution of Adelm, Bed, and Alcuin, the contribution of Sidmon, Seneulf, and other religious writers. We are also to examine extensively the Anglo Saxon prose, the contribution of Alfred, Alfric, and Ulfstan. We should not forget the fact that Christianity is preeminently a literary religion which flourished during the Anglo Saxon period since the advent of Christianity in England. We start our discussion with effects of Christianity as Christianity is basically a literary religion. It educates significantly the number of people and people became part of the religion. As we understand the birth and gradual development of Christianity in England, it had parallel growth with literature. The church became an important factor in literature. The corpus of literature was affected by church services and the texts became predominant in literary mode of production. We are aware of the fact that orality was part of early part of Anglo Saxon literature. Now, church started preserving manuscripts in their own way. The church became the seat of learning as there was no separate institution for this cause of education. So, education became part of church institution. This institutionalization of education as part of church was an imp important or historical event altogether. Latin was considered as the language of the learned. So, there was a great divide within society people with Latin language and people without Latin language. Latin language was considered as the prestigious language of the then time. Important religious texts were translated to spread the word of God to a greater number of people. We have already understood the contribution of King Alfred, who was instrumental in translating Latin texts into English corpus. Later on, a lot of contributors followed and followed the footprints of King Alfred. As a result of translation, we have a significant number of religious texts in the vernacular. As translation grew and flourished in a larger way, lot of texts from Latin became English in color and shape. Religious conversion was the fact a change in the common man's perception of the world. As Christianity was growing by then, church started converting people into Christianity. What they wanted from that? They wanted to get more Christians and to their religious counterpart as in the world forum. So, there are a lot of people who were converted willingly or unwillingly 
during that time. The literary principles became very important and pertinent, because what was pagan now infused with propaganda or message texts. Allegory emerged as a new literary genre. This is a significant growth in literature. Earlier, literature was flat, one dimensional and monolithic. Now, literature became allegorical. That means, the text within a text that faculty developed in literature. Apparently, a literary corpus looked like a pagan text, but there were infusion of Christian elements. And we cannot deny the fact, there was a whole growth of religious literature during that time. That means, we are talking about the old English period, a whole body of literature, a corpus of literature can be termed as religious literature. A literature written for a purpose, written for the conversion of man, as texts are not only simply texts, but also texts with religious written for religious purpose. However, the Anglo Saxon tribes did not forget their old heroic values. They rather imagined Christian heroes in the image of their Germanic leaders and lords. So, there is slight change in the formation or identity of heroes. Now, the Germanic heroes with are tinged with Christian color, shape and ideology. Advent of Christianity also brought a change in the ways of writing. As we have already discussed into the matter, that text prior to the advent of Christianity was largely different from the text written after Christianity, because lot of Christian sentiments, values and world orders were incorporated in Christian texts. And texts are important for conversion or converting people from one religion or non-believers into believers. Instead of carving runic letters on hard surfaces, manuscripts were now prepared with the help of punchant and ink. This is very important facet of learning. Instead of carving letters on hard surface, people started using parchment and ink in order to preserve the document forever. So, the documentation and preservation for generation are the two premier concepts that made into the act of manuscript formation during the old English period. The monks also invented insular hand, which was influenced by the style of writing used for writing Roman alphabets. By this, the contribution of monks are very important for literary productions. Now, let us discuss about Anglo Latin literature, which is a follow up to our previous discussion. The educated people thought during that time that knowledge of Latin is an additional value. Therefore, educated people were proficient both in Latin and old English language. The first group of writers wrote mostly in Latin, because the, in the then time Latin was the most dominant language in the world or spatially in Scandinavia and that part of the world. Then came the translations of Latin texts into English. By translation, there were two way trafficking. One is the transformation of knowledge of the Latin world to the English world, and the second, the availability of the Latin text in for the English readers. These writers are Adelm, Bed, and Alquim. These are the three prominent writers who are involved in prose translation and transcreation during that time. Now, students you must know the origin of Anglo-Saxon 
poetry. As we have already mentioned, King Alfred was the king of Anglo-Saxon prose. Now we are going to discuss on the Anglo-Saxon, father of Anglo-Saxon poetry, the father of Anglo-Saxon poetry. The father of Anglo-Saxon poetry is Sidmon. One of the most well-known poets in this period was Sidmon. Legends say that he was common farm, uh, he was a common farmhand who was uh, divinely blessed to sing the song of creation. This extraordinary story is also recorded by Venerable Baid in his ecclesiastical history of English people. Here two things are very important. For the first time students you are listening the name ecclesiastical history of English people which is a source book for knowing about the old English period written by Baid. Another thing the song of creation which is a trademark work by uh, any writer during that time. The most significant poem by Sidman is Haim that is first is a song. The poem exists in various old English dialects and in Latin translation and that was done by none other than Bede himself. The Sidmonian cycle, when you know Sidmon you should know the Sidmonian cycle. Various other poems are attributed to Sidmon. Why did I say the term attributed? Because that was not signed by Sidmon. So, by looking into the context and similarities in style of production, we assign those poems as written by Sidmon. Though many scholars oppose the view, they believe that these were written by other poets who were influenced by Sidmon. So, there are two group of uh, two group of critics, one believe and associate these poems with Sidmon, another thing that these poems are written by Sidmonian followers not by Sidmon. The other poems of the Junius manuscript, this manuscript we have already mentioned in our previous module that are attributed to Sidmon cycle are number 1 Genesis, number 2 Exodus, number 3 Daniel and number 4 Christ and Satan. The manuscript is divided into two books. The first contains verses related to the Old Testament and the second contains Christ and Satan. Now, let us talk about Genesis. Genesis is one of the important poems written by Sidmon which consists of 2936 lines. It is a poet poetic rendering of the book of Genesis in Old English. It tells the biblical story of Satan's rebellion and his expulsion from heaven. That means, it is a recreation of the story in the Bible. The poem has a long interpolated section known as Genesis B and some people consider it as non Sidmonian. That means, it is an interpolation included later on. This section deals with the fall of Adam and Eve and which is composed in West Saxon dialect and West Saxon was a very popular dialect during that period of time. Another important poem friends is Exodus and the poem goes to 591 lines, not a small one either. It presents the verse phrases of Exodus. The emphasis is given on the heroic leadership of Moses. The character of Moses resembles the Anglo-Saxon Lord and the Israelites like the old or the Thanes. So, it is again a story dealing about or dealing with the stories of Israelites till and Moses. Another important poem in this connection is Daniel. The poem is 764 lines. It can be divided into six fits, which is just which describes the in Hebrew. 
It's about a Hebrew history involving the rule of Nezuchijar and the three children who refused to worship the golden image. A certain portion of the poem is identified as Daniel B or also known as Ajriya, which is composed in a different style and manner altogether. Friends, we should not forget another po poem in this connection that is Christ and Satan or better to be pronounced as Christ and Satan. The poem contains 733 lines and composed in East Anglian dialect, possibly by the time you are aware of some of the dialects we have already referred to. It has 12 fits. The poem begins with the story of creation and then moves on to the fall of the angels, Satan's lament and the poem ends with a note of Christ's harrowing of hell and ascension. So, it is again a traditional tale recreated into writing. The poem lacks chronological order and is not a mere paraphrase of the Bible. The author combines the lyrical, dramatic and epic traditions to versify his knowledge of Christian theology into writing. So, it is an epic tale, it is a tale from the Bible told in a different way to make things popular among the readership. Now, there is another cycle. So far, we had been discussing Sidmonian cycle. There is another beautiful tailor of tales called Sineulf, and the cycle is termed as Sineufian cycle. The cycle contains poems which are attributed to Sineulf. By attributed, I mean the poems assigned to Sineulf by, by studying similarities um, in structure, presentation, style and thematic demarcation. One major aspect of this cycle is the use of Northumbrian dialect. Friends, you are already aware of three, four other dialectical patterns of the then time. The poems attributed to whom or Sineulf are the fate of apostles, Juliana, Eileen, and Asinson. The fate of apostles is a list of names of places where the twelve apostles taught. Assisian records the ascension of Christ to heaven. It is about Christ and his journey to heaven. Juliana is the martyr martyrdom of Juliana, the sacrifice of Juliana. Eileen, the legend of Saint Helene, the mother of Constantine. Friends, no Anglo-Saxon literature is complete without reference to Dream of the Rood, which is probably the most amazing creation during that time. This ridiculous poem is to be found in the Vercelli book. Some parts of the poem can also be found in Ruthwell Cross. The poem is in the form of a dream allegory. The cross tells the story of its wonderful life and journey. The cross is seen as both Christ's retainer and his slayer. The poem presents a curious admixture of heroic images and Christian theology. As a whole, this poem is amazing, is an amazing discourse. Now, friends, as we have witnessed anglo saxon Christian poetry. Now, we should read and know and listen to the contribution of anglo saxon prose writers and embarking on and creating anglo saxon body of literary corpus dealing with 
prose literature, old English prose which is which demands our special focus and attention whenever we talk of old English literature. The three prominent writers of old English prose are Alfred, Alfric and Ulfstan. The prose was used only for educational purposes. This is very symbolic and signifying statement claiming the fact that prose was not at all used for official and for other activities. Alfred was the patron of learning and instrumental in the translation of many immortal books from Latin into English. As we have already mentioned, King Alfred was instrumental and the driving force for the spread of English prose during old English period. He took us to the Gangotri of English prose during the old English period. His important books of translations include Pope Gregory's Pastoral Care, Orosius's Universal History, Boethius's Concerning the Consolation of Philosophy and Bed's Ecclesiastical History of the English Nation and all these translations are reader friendly for reading for the reading world. Anglo-Saxon Chronicle is possibly and by far the most important contribution of King Alfred. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle was began in the hands of King Alfred and it became a significant body to know about the age through a literary corpus. Now after King Alfred, Alfric. Alfric was chiefly known for his Catholic homilies. He wrote mainly for the religious readers. He also translated some major texts from Latin into English. One of those texts is Heptatich and Alfric is noted for immortal works and contributions when he dealt with homilies and the lives of the saints and transmitted them to the reading world. Ulfstan also contributed to homilies and sermons. His important compositions are addressed to the English sermons. In these book works, he asked the English people to unite against Danish invasion. So, there is a nationalistic demand or the demand for, uni for unified sensibility in the works of Ulfstan. Both Alfric and Ulfstan contributed to sermons and preferably they are been treated as the writers who contributed to religious theory, uh, theology and theological prose during the old English period. Hello friends, I think you enjoyed our ride together in module 3. In this module we tried to conceptualize Anglo-Saxon religious literature, the influence of Christianity on literature. We have had extensive or an elaborate discussions on Sidmon and Sineolf, signed poems, unsigned poems, poems attributed to them. We have already discussed Sidmonian cycle and Sineolfian cycles. At the same time, we have had elaborate discussions on Anglo Saxon prose. In this connection, we have discussed on the contribution of King Alfred, Alfric and Ulfstan. We really enjoyed working it together and read old English prose as reading wonder. 
we have had a detailed discussions on module 3. Those who want to know more about the Anglo-Saxon Christian literature and also Anglo-Saxon prose can read Liguis and Kazamian, History of English Literature, number 1. Number 2, Michael Swanton, English Literature Before Chaucer, is a long man production. And A. C. Baugh edited A Literary History of England, Volume 1, The Middle Ages, by Kem Malone, published in the year seven, 1972. And I know we live in the world of internet, so no reference should go without reference to online resources. You can also visit www.anglo-saxon.net. Thank you.